This is Kyle Madsen with your top stories on Sports 1140. The NBA's Christmas Day games came and went without a ton of drama. The Knicks couldn't pass the Bucks in a 109-95 Milwaukee victory. No? Okay. Come on, man. I was You didn't even hear it. No, I you yeah, didn't the even no, hear it. I did. I was no, multitasking. Did you though? But did you hear it? Did you? I heard it. I just didn't. Brother, this guy stinks. I, I heard it. I just didn't listen. The Lakers uh, put a beat down on the Warriors, 127-101, but LeBron James' groin injury is the story of that game. He only played 21 minutes. His status for tomorrow's game against the Kings, that's why you care, uh, is in question. The Kings didn't play yesterday. They do play tonight. They're at Staples Center. 7 o'clock pregame, 7.30 tip right here on Sports 1140. It's 8.03. Time to make a great deal at madeatoyota.com. Those are your top stories. Now back to the drive on Sports 1140, KHGK. Rise and shine, I'm not letting you go to work today. Wait, what? Everybody, listen up. Welcome to The Drive. Morning, morning, morning. You're going to talk. Get on the phone at 339-1140. Pretty awesome, huh? Jump in on our text line at 44-1140. Everyone is talking about it. You must know that. The Drive starts now. Hour number three already. Just a reminder, we'll be here tomorrow on Friday. We'll be off again Monday, Tuesday of next week for the new year. It's time for a brand new season of The Drive. And as always, we appreciate you, especially you going back to work today. 339 1140 one 800 Text us at 44 on the Jiffy Loop text line. Our thanks to Tony Massenberg and Walt Williams, both ex-kings, both authors of Lessons from Lenny. Check it out again, LessonsFromLenny.com. And that will be available at KHTK.com on the uh, podcast and on demand as well, Scott Bear of NBC Sports California will be coming up shortly to talk about your Oakland Raiders. Uh, Kyle, a couple of things before we get to Scott. I, I really need to be careful with the things that I watch. You know, we go to break and I catch up on stuff. Right. Things will catch my eye. Um, and you get derailed. And I get derailed. Dude, um, you know, people say on Twitter or on social media, they'll say, oh, my God, watch this. I'm just bawling. I'm crying. I'm. Um, you know, whatever. And, you know, 90% of the time, nobody, nobody's crying. Shut up. They're not crying. You just thought it was heartfelt. But there are exceptions, man. I will tell you, military reunions are probably number one. Get me every single every time. Every time. Uh, the, 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 it could be just a basic, like, hey. <laughs> right. Home. And just like a handshake. Yeah. <laughs> Or, you know, it. the Kings did this the other night. It was a great moment where they you, you open the box, door number two, and I think it was the mom and the sister were on the floor, and uh, a gentleman returned home from service. And the, the mom was my favorite. She, she couldn't even hug him. She just kind of fell to her knees and grabbed his oh. his, his pant leg, you know, while she was crying, just, oh. just full on. I, I love just pure emotion there, and you can totally understand it. We, we so appreciate all of those who serve, who have served, and are still serving uh, right now. I would say maybe the second, and, and these don't pop up as often, but I was watching a video of uh, a kid, oh, nine, ten years old, uh, opening up Christmas presents, and he and he opened up, the, and in the card, it basically, they were asking him if he would uh, want to be a part of their family because they wanted to adopt him, and the kid broke down. And when the kids broke down, oh. You know, when the kids break down, that's yep. really what gets it every. And that's the one I was watching in the break. I was like, I gotta, I gotta favorite this and save it for later. And as soon as the kid lost it while he was reading the letter, there was one yesterday. Uh, I forget the name of the Royals, uh, the Royals player, but he got a four and a half million dollar signing bonus from Kansas City, and he videoed his mom and dad. His mom opened up the the card or the letter or whatever, and he said, "Hey, I want to thank you guys for." all the sacrifice you've done, this, that, whatever, you know, going through all the times that they spent money, time, effort on on his pursuing his baseball career. said, so for Christmas, uh, I just want you to know I paid off the house. <laughs> I paid off all your debt. Uh, so now the money uh, you save instead of saving it so you can pay off your debt that you incurred in a large part because of me, uh, you can now spend on yourselves, and the mom's losing it the whole time. The dad, they, the dad made the right move by not reading it at all. He just sat there and tried not to cry because he wouldn't. Have, yeah, that's every kid's dream to to do that for your parents. Are you kidding? Good on, good on, <laughs> not you, Kyle. <laughs> good on that guy. 
for pulling that off seriously um but yeah there are we'll have to do a mount rushmore sometime of videos sometimes the animal ones get me too sometimes the animal ones get me too you know like animals been cooped up forever and they freed the the, the doggy uh, what's that say the dodo gets me and, and then finally before we get to scott uh I have no connection to this guy whatsoever as far as geography goes or teams I root for or whatever, but I, it's hard for me to imagine in my lifetime a more likable athlete, an athlete that I would want my kids. Uh, for example, if I had to pick an athlete to uh, adopt my children and raise them as his own, I think it would be Larry Fitzgerald. And there was a very, uh, very cool moment. There was an AP writer uh, who'd covered the team for 43 years who was uh, retiring or going somewhere else. I don't know what it was. And uh, Larry was up in his press, you know, doing his press conference at the podium, and he stopped. He said, hey, listen, I want to recognize this guy. Got him a framed uh, Cardinals jersey with his name on the back, and they stopped and took pictures. I mean, seriously, I want to hear from people at some point who don't like Larry Fitzgerald, just so I can meet them and understand who hurt them in life. How do you not love, not even like, love Love Larry Fitzgerald. I don't know how it's possible. Couldn't be me. I also don't know how people couldn't love Scott Bear. NBC Sports California writes uh, Oakland Raiders each and every week, and hopefully this week is easier than some weeks past as uh, the home fans got a nice win, perhaps, perhaps, to close out the uh, history of the Oakland Coliseum. Scott, I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. How are you? I did, I did. I hope you had the same. Uh, How are things? Well, you know, uh, they're good, man. We're back for three days. We were off yesterday and Monday, then uh, another four-day weekend in front of that as we close out the uh, the NFL season. And I, I think I will ask you this. I had read online that there was <laughs> that there was a high-pitched noise going through the press box out at the Coliseum, and people were wondering if it was uh, the ghosts of the mice in the uh, in the soda machine. Were you were you in the box? for that high-pitched noise, and did anybody ever find out what it was? Uh, yeah, at first I was concerned that maybe it was not just a test of the emergency broadcast system, <laughs> that maybe something had finally broken, the whole thing was just going to implode, you know, Las Vegas, Stardust Casino style. Uh, but uh, ultimately we never, we never <laughs> found the source of it, which just adds to the legend and the ghosts of Oakland Coliseum floating around haunting press that write terrible things about its facilities, its broken elevators, its skunks, its skunks, no joke, murdered in the concourse, oh. its dead mice in the soda machines. It's, and, of course, it's raining, right? So there, uh, there's actually a section of Oakland Coliseum where there's kind of stairs, at least from the top level to the second level and on down to the field. And there, and there is a... Uh, there's a, let's just call it the Bill King waterfall that somehow finds its way to zigzag all the way from the top of the stadium all the way down. It was a rushing rapid uh, on Monday, which again is only fitting that if if it is the last one that we got to experience all that facility's uh, strange quirks. Yeah, it, it's and at the same time, and maybe this is just I, I don't know the old heads, and and I'm kind of in the middle here, but I saw somebody comment over the weekend that with all the, the the faults of the Coliseum, if that truly was its final game, that that football stadiums like the Coliseum, like like Candlestick Park, for example, they, they the new ones just don't have that character. It's just not the same type of crowd, noise, et cetera. Now, you spent a lot of time there. Do you buy that, or do you think that's just people being nostalgic? Uh, I think it's a little of both, but I think mostly – uh, that old venue, and it's just a big, you know, pile of concrete and rebar to me. Um, I don't have a lot of love for the facility itself, but it's weird because I, I covered the Chargers, so I, I came to Oakland several times, and I remember my first time walking through the crowd, and I was like, this crowd is sketch, man, and, like, I wasn't wearing silver and black, and somebody, like, yelled at me that I wasn't, and I was kind of off putting. I was sort of uncertain about the crowd. But now that I go there all the time, crowd is legit like it's it's basically a mardi gras um where everybody dresses up and has a great time and i'm not the first person to ever say this but it's hands down the most diverse 
NFL crowd that you're ever going to go to. It was the cheapest seats in the NFL for a long time. It brought people from different locations and walks of life. And we actually had uh, one of our Cub reporters, Marcus White, was embedded in the black hole during uh, Monday's game. And the charity afforded to a guy who was all by himself and clearly didn't bring enough uh, all-weather clothing was just yeah. remarkable. And the, the, the people there that, you know, really – that that's their bond. Maybe they come from different walks of life, but that's their bond is Raiders football. And it's really cool to see the environment's great. The tailgates are amazing. Uh, all of those things cannot and will not be replicated in Las Vegas. They will not be replicated if, if everybody's getting uh, off the BART uh, to go to AT&T Park or, you know, having to caravan uh, down to Santa Clara. So uh, if, if it is the last game, that's the part of it that uh, I will definitely miss. So, as we talked to Scott Bear of NBC Sports California, third week in a row we've talked about this, are, are you any closer uh, than last week to being able to say whether or not you truly believe this was the last game at the Coliseum, or are we going to find most of those facts out after the season ends? Yeah, I think it's going to be the latter, but I will say that there are some kind of subtle signs. The fact that Marshawn Lynch, who could win mayor of Oakland, mm -hmm. any election he chose to enter – he did the last. Um, he did the last torch lighting. I thought that was kind of yeah. something that maybe they're prepping for something else. And the players really. See, and this is conjecture. This isn't for sources. Okay, this is just us talking on a you know giant mm. uh, <laughs> uh, radio signal here. But uh, yeah, it just seemed like the players were definitely well prepped to treat this like it was the last game. So I think for all those reasons, um, it does kind of. Uh, kind of lend itself to hey maybe they're going somewhere else and this is a non this is a non sequitur but I encourage your social media people uh, to find a photo after Marshawn Lynch lit the torch right it's basically like a button and then the light goes up uh, or and then the flame goes up well afterward he was caught by several people uh, after he lit the eternal Al Davis flame uh, he reached into his pocket he pulled out a joint and then he tried to like tiptoe up like maybe. <laughs> From the flame uh yeah there, icon. there's a photo of it find it uh i think maybe vic taper retweeted it uh but anyway it's out there a fan had it find a way post it on your social maybe the best sports related <laughs> photo i've ever seen in my life. i saw i thought that was photoshopped i i saw that uh during the break but you, you can clarify that's a real photo <laughs> what now? Whoa, 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 whoa. That's, that, that's not another per source situation either. I just will say that it def if that was photoshopped, it was brilliant, and it got me right. 100%. <laughs> if it's real, and the fact is because it's Marshawn, maybe it's yeah. certainly possible, yeah, right? That anything's real. possible. But, yeah, uh, maybe have some of your uh, friends and experts uh, over there at KHTK take a look at it. Uh, figure and, and by forensic experts, I mean, uh, you know, some interns that are bored. I'm looking at this right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this thing right now. He's reaching up over the is it, whatever that is. To is the it flame. legit? Uh, listen, uh, I, I, they can do some really oh, man, good things okay, with Photoshop, but here's, where, here's why it's real. Because <laughs> why is he going to reach his fist up to try to touch the flame and it's – He's holding the fist in a way in which you would hold something between your thumb and your forefinger. I don't know why he would do take away the joint. I don't sure, know sure, why sure. That's he'd a good point. do that. I, that. Scott, I'm saying it's real, and that's going to go down the, the Jordan dunk at United Center. Uh, <laughs> uh, I would say Muhammad Ali standing over Sonny Liston, and now Marshawn Lynch trying to light a joint off of the, uh, the Al Davis flame. That is fan-freaking-tastic. Yeah, and you know, not again, not to get too detailed, but I have seen the photo. I've, I've seen the video of him actually lighting the torch with the mechanism, whatever you're gonna call it, right. the remote. Right. And it, and it's 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 a different angle. It's a different everything. And if you look at the people taking pictures with cell phones around there, yeah, they are like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening. Yep. So yeah, I mean, it. I, it it ranks right up there when I saw it. Uh, last night, I was like, that's a little Oakland Merry Christmas to me right there. It was, uh, you know, poetic, and yeah, post it, spread it, make it viral. That's just as Marshawn as Marshawn gets, and I mean that in the most positive, right. amazing, totally awesome way that I possibly can. Hey, a lot of the a lot of the talk, like you said, it sounded like the players had been prepped to, to treat this as the last game in Oakland. 
do they care at all, uh, just kind of as a whole, or are they more worried about uh, how a move is going to potentially uh, impact their, their wallets? Yeah, it's a fair question. And I, I think it depends on how long you've been there. Obviously, Derek Carr cares, and he was predictably awesome after the game, talking about, you know, good moments and bad there. And there's a lot of people that have – you know, four years of experience through bad times when the crowds are still into it. Uh, but I was always surprised. I talked to uh, Nicholas Morrow, kind of a, a fringe linebacker, played some snaps, not a very popular guy, second-year player, undrafted. Right? And I was talking to him about the Coliseum. And I, you know, asked him if they had any quirks or if he ever had a toilet flood on him or something like that. And, uh, and he's like, honestly, chill is just thinking about how how into the game they are, how united they are. And I'm like, oh, a second-year guy from Illinois feels that way. I, I was sort of surprised at that. And I was surprised at how many rookies, I think, were, were really kind of captivated by it. Now, does that mean that they've been well-prepped? That's entirely possible. But, um, you know, I do think that, that it is important. But it will become less important the closer that we get to 2020. Um, I... I liken it to the Chargers situation in San Diego. I covered that team for a long time. I'm pretty well connected down there. And when they moved from Qualcomm up to Los Angeles, right, Phillip Rivers was like beside himself. And not just because he had to carpool 90 minutes to go to work, but it was it was a major deal for him because he was a San Diego Charger. But Joey Bosa and Jason Verrett and a lot of those newer guys, they didn't care. Like, they're going to Hollywood. Well, Carson, I didn't have the, you know, we had the heart to break it to him that it's 50 miles away but anyway they were super excited to be in Los Angeles because they didn't have that emotional investment with the amount of roster turnover that we saw last year and the amount that we're going to see again it's going to be like a tumble dry in terms of how much roster is going to be spun around here uh, that, that ultimately that will get less and less um, and you're right. There was I, I was looking around for people to talk to. And I'm like, all right, I got five or six people that have been here more than two years. Um, so for that reason, I think it's not quite as impactful. But John Gruden really keeps it close to heart, right? Because as we've talked about, he really cares. Uh, he showed the guys some kind of Coliseum footage, and I think uh, that may have got them revved up and uh, ready to go and with their minds in the right spot. As we talked to Scott Bear of NBC Sports California, so we spent time on – whether or not it's the uh, the last game there and, and all the hijinks and hullabaloo surrounding it, uh, the game itself. I don't want to anger Raider fans. They got a nice win, only their fourth of the year against a, a rival. Whether whether Denver's any good or not, it's still a division rival. So I'll ask you this from a pure football perspective. Is there anything out of this game for Raider fans to get excited about that you can point to offensively or defensively, or is this just a matter of two crap teams and one carrot a little more than the other? Uh, well, it's definitely that. Right. But I'm gonna, but I'm, but I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna throw in the scuba tank and take a deep dive here. Yeah. Uh, number one, the rookie tackles, right? Colt Miller and Brandon Parker, who everybody, fans especially, um, I think maybe more than I have, taken a lot of shots at those guys. Colt Miller leads the league in sacks allowed, and pressures allowed, and Brandon Parker has been rough. He once allowed three sacks in a row, in a row. Yes. A guy that I've never heard of. But anyway, uh, Von Miller and Bradley Chubb on Monday were freaking silent. Von Miller didn't even have a tackle. Uh, Bradley Chubb had one pressure, and those guys have 26.5 sacks between them. Uh, quick math, that's like 150% more than the entire Raiders team. Uh, so that's a real positive sign for guys that will be in the same starting positions next year, despite what some fans may uh, wish that Colton Miller is going to be a left tackle. He is improving. The healthier he is, the better he is. And Brandon Parker, same way. Those guys are going to gain about 12 pounds of muscle and be, in my opinion, a lot better for this, at times, trying experience. Uh, and number two, I think defensively in the secondary, we're seeing uh, significantly better play, significantly, significantly more physical play. And Paul Gunther, who's going to be on my podcast this week, look it up, download it drop in Thursday. Uh, he was, he's working with, every talks about the rookies, 11 of his guys playing significant snaps have three years experience or less. That's a lot. And I talked about the roster turnover and that you can't take momentum from one year to the next. And all those things are freaking true. But there is going to be some holdover with maybe, uh, let's say, half the starting lineup. Let's say 10 guys within the heavy rotation. And those guys know your system. 
and you've taught them what this defense looks like when it's going well and how to execute it and what it's like to win. And those guys can be your ambassadors when you're teaching uh, other draft picks or new veterans in this system. They can expedite that process because last year Paul Gunther, not only is he teaching players a brand new scheme, he's teaching coaches a new scheme. So it's new to everyone except for him and the linebackers coach. So I think that familiarity and continuity and positive experience down the stretch I think is a real plus. And was there ever uh, a benefit um, and I'm not making a Khalil Mack reference here, I promise. Although I did talk to him Saturday at uh, Levi's. Um, to having a guy that you think, let's trade this guy, and then not trade him. Carl Joseph is that guy. Carl Joseph is playing like a first-round draft pick now. And boy, they're probably glad that they didn't ship him to Green Bay for a sixth or something like that now. And, I mean, who knows? Maybe they wish they didn't ship Khalil to Chicago. I can't help myself. I just can't do it. Uh, but yeah, you know, maybe they regret another trade that sh- uh, shan't be named. But anyway, I, Carl Jones is playing better. So there are little things that you can point to, little things that you can translate to next year uh, from young guys that have played a lot and are starting to, to become better for the experience. That is Scott uh, Scott Bear, NBC Sports California. Check his workout at NBCSports.com. Just go to the Raiders section, and then uh, boom, there you go. Also, uh, also your colleague Jessica Kleinschmidt here with uh, – I enjoyed her article about the tailgate. I, I would just say the only thing I'll take her to task for, because it caught my eye, I read the whole thing. It, it, was, it was a very fine article, but just in the future, I'd like to see – uh, Scott, I'd like to see more description of the actual uh, some of the food. You know, I I, I want yeah. to see the meals and what these guys are, and gals are out there cooking at these tailgates. I mean, come on, we got to know, Scott. Yeah, and it's 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 an impressive cross section of what you got there. You could have like a teriyaki chicken kebab and then like a brat and then like ribs all in one consecutive row of awesomeness. Uh, yeah, man, the food's pretty legit. Check Scott's workout and all of his friends at NBCSports.com. Uh, buddy, uh, glad you had a great Christmas. And, uh, hey, I, I'll talk to you next year, Scott. That doesn't get old, as you know. Absolutely not. Never, never, never. All right, man. All right, Let's brother. start 2019 out. What a bank. Take care. It's Scott Bear. Yeah, that's another thing. Can we not do that unless we're making fun of people doing that? I, seriously, every time somebody says, hey, I'll see you next year over the next week, they should have to donate, like, 20 bucks a charity or something. Hey, say see you next year. See you next year. Oh, brother, this guy stinks. Thank you. That's my exact thoughts. When we get back, uh, Kyle's got uh, some facts, and they're cold, and they're hard, and they're brought to you by Coors Light. It's all coming up in a couple minutes right here on Sports 1140 KHTK. This is Kyle Madsen with your top stories on Sports 1140. Hey, there were some Christmas Day games in the NBA yesterday. The Bucks bound past the Knicks 109-95 because they, they're bounding, like running. Sure. Galloped. They galloped, Pat? Okay. Galloped is better than bounded. Bi- bounded. Uh, that bounded. sounds like a movie. <laughs> uh, the Rockets, they... Launched. Launched over the Thunder, 113-109. Mm-hmm. The Celtics, they didn't have trouble to – they they didn't need to sell ticks to that one because it was a good game against the 76ers. It went to overtime, and the Celtics won 121-114. Celtics are <laughs> 114. hard. I, I got you. Yeah, that's a, that's that's a tough one. Hey, the Warriors, more like the Warriors after a 127-101 loss to the Lakers – on Christmas Day. Yeah. Lakers sunk the Warriors. In their yeah, I got him. Water. Uh, LeBron James hurt his groin, and he might not play against the Kings tomorrow. That's still up in the air. And uh, the Blazers went in, and they were like, we're going to win. And the Jazz were like, huh, you taught. And the Jazz won 117-96. Like, you thought. And port like, landed like, themselves a loss. Yeah, they did. Blazers sure. more like lazy losers yeah nice dude uh the kings did not play yesterday they played tonight though uh they're at the staples center against the clippers game night starts at six kings live is at seven tip off with the g-man is set for 7 30 right here on these airways on sports 11 40 it's 8 32 time to make a great deal at made i'm so funny. so what i'm so funny funny here we go 
The drive continues now. Yeah. That didn't meow that one. Shows how much we're on it. I'd like to welcome in the five of you listening. I liked it. I liked it. We're doing shows today, but we're not really here. <laughs> we're just we're just here so we don't get fined. This is a this is a best of show that we recorded before oh. Christmas. We probably should do some best of here this week. Don't we have some best of things? I have a lot. Yeah, we can do like a year in review. Yeah, let's do that. That'll be fun. Yeah. We'll do that Friday. Do that that Friday. And And then we'll have to play, uh, I think, just for posterity. Yeah. That's a good word. I think for posterity, we need to play you and Sean. Yeah, with Katie? Yeah. That was good. No, we'll do that. Uh, Let's see. Tomorrow we've got... Uh, Sam Amick on at 8 o'clock. Lance Woods is going to come in studio at 8.35 and hang oh, out with us. Brilliant. Uh, Friday, we've got, uh, maybe we've got, I'm going to talk to Sean and Dave Richard because I, I, I think with Dave. Yeah, fantasy football's over. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm going to give them the opportunity to have the week off because it's a holiday. Sean, Sean's year-round. I'll talk to him. And with Dave, I do want to have a wrap-up call with Dave, but we'll, we'll do it either this week or maybe we'll do it the following we'll week. Talk and just, keeper leagues? <clears throat> yeah. We'll just do all best of, live best of, but we'll just do uh, some retrospect on Friday. Like I said, you know, literally, there's literally like four people listening, right? I can tell on the text line. It's like the same five. Normally we have, this is a very text-heavy show. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I get it. Uh, before you get to your cold hard fact, Kyle, I've got one for you. I want to make sure I'm not stealing your cold hard fact. Does it have anything to do with Steph Curry? No, mine, are, uh, mine is the Steelers playoff scenarios. All right, so here you go. How about this? This is a thing now, isn't it? Uh, I mean, Steph Curry sucks at Christmas. I know, man. He's horrible. He's really bad. So his point points per game, 12.3, <laughs> while shooting 29% from the field, Oof. 20% from behind the arc. That is his worst calendar day averages for those three categories, which are all pretty important. Of any day of the year. He does not like playing on Christmas. he doesn't. And he's had a few games on Christmas. Yeah, they've played the last, I think, four or five years. Their 26-point loss at home. The third worst under Steve Kerr. Yeah. There was the 28-point loss to the Thunder. I believe it was on November 21st. That is correct. And there was the season opener against the Spurs. I think it was a 28-point loss. Mm. No, idiot. It's 29. 29 point loss. What's the, what was the date? October. That is correct. October. It was October. It's October 6th. Yeah, you were close because you know most of the time seasons open that early. 16th. <laughs> October 25th. 25th. Yeah, 2000 and something. 2006. 16. 16. Cold Hard Facts brought Kevin to Durant's you. first game. Cold Hard Facts brought to you by Coors Light starts right now. It's time, it's time for the Coors Light Cold Hard Fact of yes. the Day. Here's Kyle Madsen. That's me. That's you, Kyle Madsen, brought to you by Coors Light Cold Hard Facts. So here's how the Steelers get into the playoffs, and it's – it's. I say this because I feel like all year we were talking about, hey, the Steelers are right there, the Steelers are right there, and, and now they're not. They're on the outside looking in, and if they win and the Ravens lose to the Browns, mm. the Steelers are in. Okay. If the Steelers, if the Steelers tie, and the Ravens lose to the Brown, the Steelers are in. Okay, here's the scenario I'm rooting for. If the Steelers win, and the Ravens win, the Steelers would then need a Colts Titans tie ah. to make the playoffs. So I'm rooting for Steelers and Ravens wins, and then I'm rooting hard for a tie on Sunday night. Let's see. What do we have here? The Steelers The Steelers take on the Bengals at home. Yep. And the Ravens have the Browns. So the Ravens have what would appear to be a tougher game. Yeah, much tougher. You want to know what the line is in the uh, Steelers-Bengals game? Uh, I'm guessing it's Steelers minus 10 and a half. 14 and a half. <laughs> Baltimore favorite by six against the Browns. Hmm. 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 Meh. Hmm. A little high. Maybe not. And uh, how about the Chargers? How about the Chargers needing to beat the Broncos in Denver, which should happen? 
but they also need a Chiefs loss to the Raiders. Chiefs currently favored by 13 and a half at Arrowhead. <laughs> and here's what's here's what's crazy. All the Chargers had to do is win a home. If they they win a home game against the Ravens, yeah, the Ravens are good, man. And they're the number one seed in the AFC. Yeah, that's that's ridiculous. Yeah, they're gonna look back on that game and be very angry. Yeah, in that voice for sure. Uh, very angry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's all going to come down to next week. And then the I love it. The uh, Sunday night game is uh, the first game of the playoffs. So there are contenders. Mm-hmm. And then that, so let's, let's say it's Saints, Rams, Chiefs, Chargers. Sure. Then the rest of the teams, I think, are in the like, oh, nobody wants to run into this team category. Like this is the team people don't want to see. Sure. Power rank those teams. Patriots. Okay, so you got your Patriots. I, I, because honestly, I'm almost surprised you didn't put them in the contenders. Or yeah, I put them in there. That's fine. Okay. So I'm talking like Chargers. Like, okay, you are, you put the Chargers, Chiefs, Saints, and Patriots, and Rams. And Rams. Okay, so then your number one is going to be the Bears. Okay, Bears. Nobody nobody wants to play, nobody wants to play the Bears. Okay. Uh, I would probably. I'm just going to, in in the NFC. Let's we'll go Bears, Cowboys. Seahawks. Oh, I'm putting the Seahawks ahead the Seahawks of the Cowboys. Of the Cowboys? Yeah. Um, I don't think anybody cares about playing the Ravens or the Texans. I honestly see. I don't. think people don't want to play the Ravens. Yeah, you I mean, have to prepare for that super weird offense. Yeah, their defense is dynamite. God, their defense is dynamite. If the Colts get in, nobody is trying to play the Colts. Just to just to give you an idea, the. Uh, the Saints have given up 320 points this year. The Rams have given up 352. The Chiefs that, that, have given up 418. Oof. The Ravens have given up 263. How many have the Bears given up? Uh, the Bears. Like 200? 273. Ooh. No, the Ravens lead the league in points against. Interesting. I, I believe it is interesting. Uh, do you know who has the uh, biggest point differential in the league? you want to take a stab at that? The biggest point differential? Is it the Titans of Tennessee? It is not. Oh. Uh, I'm talking about it. the Titans are plus twenty three. The uh, the New Orleans Saints are at plus one seventy. Holy smokes! The Rams are in second at plus one twenty seven. The Jeez. Bears are at plus one twenty four, and the only other team. Uh, above 100 would be the Chiefs at plus 112. I would not have guessed that order. Me neither. One other thing about your Chicago Bears, Kyle. Love my Bears. Here's what's interesting about the Bears. They're 11-4. and four, But check out their losses. Opening day, Green Bay lost 24-23. Ridiculous comeback, yep. Could have gone either way. Took a big comeback. They went down to Miami and lost by three. That was a stupid game. That was such a dumb game. They lost to the Patriots at home. That's legit, 38-31. Yeah. But uh, two special teams touchdowns and like a blocked punt or something ridiculous in that game for the Patriots. And then their only other loss was overtime in New York. Should I say in New Jersey to the Giants? 30-27. to Another weird game. I mean, that's... Basic ipso facto, the Bears are undefeated. Well, we're counting the Patriots. I feel like we both agreed on that. But, my goodness. They, I mean, those are some pretty weird losses. I mean, they beat the Cardinals by two. I just don't, I especially after watching them play the 49ers, I don't trust that Bears offense at all. At all. Do you trust it at all? At all. All I said. The only thing I would say there, and we got to go. I think it's possible the Niners are finishing a little better than a lot of people give them credit for. Like the Niners. Uh, sure, if, sure. If, I, I if think we're so. ranking crappy teams that playoff teams don't want to play to get into the playoffs or to go for playoff positioning, I'm not so sure the Niners aren't. They're just playing fairly well right now. I, I, I guess, but. It was more just how how disjointed that offense looks, yeah. and and I've thought that for a while, and it just confirmed it. I mean, the Niners aren't even if they're playing their best, the Niners aren't a top five defense, no, or something crazy like that. 
and they stink. Well, so did the show. We'll be back tomorrow. Uh, we'll give it another shot. We'll be back in four minutes. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you, hey, you know why you threw me? Because you said we've got to wrap up. <laughs> and I honestly was like, oh, this is the end of the show. <laughs> By tomorrow, I mean, like, if <laughs> if the day ended at 843 and then, like, the new day started at 844. Yeah. That's yeah. what I meant. Shut up, Kyle. Banging your head against a wall for one hour burns 150 calories, so. Well, that's what we've been doing for three hours. I'm so. going to go, uh, yeah, we've burned about 450 calories, and we'll finish that up next with What's on Tap right here on Sports 1140 KHTK. What's on Tap brought to you by Magicians. Hey, ever wonder where those rabbits go? Me too. Magicians. I watched a thing on Johnny Carson the other day. Did you know Johnny Carson was a world-class drummer? I did not know that. I said maybe one of the reasons he was a really good drummer uh, was because he grew up as a magician. That was his first foray into show business, and the sleight of hand maybe helped with his dexterity. Sure. Yeah, how about how about that? You don't care about Johnny Carson. He doesn't care about you. I love Johnny Carson. Are you kidding me? Uh, predictions for the three games versus L.A. It's from the text line. They want our predictions. Uh, Kings, this person's prediction is Kings go 2-1, and one, steal one from the Clippers, and win at home Thursday. Kyle, your predictions for the next three games. I think the Kings lose tonight. Mm-hmm. I think that's the first time I've ever predicted a loss for them. Yeah. Wow. I think they lose 118-112. Mm-hmm. Then I think they come back and they win tomorrow. I think they beat the Lakers. Okay, second game of a back-to-back, mm-hmm. which they're really which good they're at. Which they're not good at. They're amazing on those. I think they win tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. And then they get the day off, and then they're back in L.A. against the Lakers again. Yep. I think they win that one, too. I think they take both from the Lakers. So you I go, think they, they go two and one with two wins over the Lakers. Yeah, I think so. Okay. All right. Kings play tonight. In Los Angeles, 7.30 start, 7 o'clock pregame. Right here on the Sporty 11.40 versus the Clippers. Clippers favored by five and a half in this one. That's a good line. That is a very good line. I'm not touching it, as they say. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kyle, your Dallas Mavericks are uh, floundering a little bit, 15 and 17, but they are at home where they're 13 and 3. One of those losses coming to the Kings. Third of their home losses this year have come to the Sacramento Kings. That's, That's a great a point. 33%. Uh, they host the Pelicans. The uh, Grizzlies host the Cavaliers. I'm just, it's kind of neat looking at teams that are around where the Kings are for playoff jockeying. There's a full slate of NBA games tonight. A lot of tilts. Whole bunch of tilts, dude. A lot of tilts. Uh, all right, so that's what's going on tonight. Uh, wrapping up. Speaking of wrapping up, or should I say, uh, dare I say, unwrapping, I uh, surprised the entire family, especially my uh, lovely bride last uh, yesterday. You know the uh, the old Ralphie Christmas story trick where uh, there's the one present left? It's the present yeah. the kid's been asking for forever. Well, like the moron that I am, um, like the absolute pushover waste of a father that I am, I succumbed unbeknownst to anyone and uh, 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 got my daughter a cell phone for Christmas Ooh. yesterday. It's been a big point of contention in and around the family, and I was vastly, sure. vastly outnumbered. She's 11. I think that's way too young for a cell phone and all the things that come with it, but I was changed by the fact that in consulting, you know, it takes a village, Kyle, uh, and in consulting with said village, uh, a couple of things broke me. Uh, number one, it gives me the ability to track my daughter, uh, which right. is always, you know, nice. Number two, um, there were just too many times because of her school activities where she had to borrow somebody's phone, and I know that was annoying for them, and I, I don't ever want her caught. There was a situation where her drama class got out a half hour early, and this really pissed me off because it, it's from uh, 7 to 8 o'clock on Fridays. Uh, or 6.30 to 8, excuse me, got out 15 minutes early, 
And everybody left. She was standing out front of the school in the dark waiting for me. And thank God somebody had a phone there that she used. But she would have been in the dark by herself, 11 years old. That freaked me out a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then I also learned, especially with uh, with iPhones, I got, her, got an older iPhone. I was going to get her one of those like jitterbugs for the old people. Because <laughs> I don't want to have any functionality other than calling me or her mother. Uh, I found out, and I spent much of the day yesterday, pretty much blocking everything on, like, she can't do anything without my permission, basically, and I can see everything she's doing, and it makes me feel a little bit better. One of the things, though, is anytime she wants to download an app, I get I get a notification. I, I have to approve it. So let's let's approve these together. Uh, oh, I love I'll, this. This is, I'm so, I see. This is great. I love when you get me in on the parenting. I, I you know what? I got to uh, I got to I got to help you. Uh, I got to prepare you. Avery would like to get the app Fancy Key keyboard themes for free from the App Store. Uh, this is basically uh, it turns part of your keyboards into emoji. She's an 11 year old girl. Obviously, that's fair. Going to be that's emoji. Really fair. Uh, four, four and a half out of five stars, uh, 9,500 ratings. Just looks like cute little emojis. Okay. Go ahead and approve I'm that. in, yeah. That was the easy one, Kyle. Oh, come on. Do I have to sign in? Son of a <laughs> face. All right, uh, so what Dave doesn't know is I have to approve his approval, and so I get a it's, notification. It's, that's called two-factor authentication. Uh, Bink. All right, uh, here's the one that's a little more difficult, Kyle. Uh, Avery would like to get the app buzzfeed from the app store i think i'm out on buzzfeed for an 11 year old yeah i am too i just she doesn't need uh she's like probably gonna... I, if if it's the if it's the new york times okay fine fine but even that i don't need listen i don't there's a fine line between she, sheltering and but if she wants to be educated that's fine uh, yeah but but she buzzfeed be, is to no i'm out on educated BuzzFeed. by carmen san diego and you know Kermit. Th that's fair okay that's fair uh, this one she just can has, filter the news through you. Uh, celebrity news, and you know somebody got murdered. Yeah, no, I'm out on that. She's probably gonna want to do it for the quizzes and the princesses. Oh, definitely. But you know what? There's a mobile site for that. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the big, uh, big decline on that. <clears throat> what does she? Does she get notifications? It says, like, is she sitting here watching on her phone right now? And it's just big red X. Uh. <laughs> Avery would like to download. <laughs> Avery would like to download BuzzFeed. Approve or decline? That's just what it sounds like. By the way, her mother had been one of the people working the hardest on me to do this. Mm -hmm. And then when I get it, I actually have it on video. I'll show you after the show. Um, she glared at me the entire time, and finally I said, "What? I thought I thought you were going to be happy. I envisioned a Christmas story. This yeah. was my daughter's Red Rider right. BB gun, right? Yeah. You know, I, I, I thought you'd be happy. She goes, she has a better phone than I do. Nah. I said, hey, stupid, you could have. You, you, it says go you upgrade get, your phone. You get an upgrade notice every you know five minutes. Yeah. You can upgrade your phone. You choose not to. Go in and do that. Stop thinking of yourself. Think of your kid." That's it? Just three? The What? The three uh, mm -hmm. apps? Yeah, apps. Oh, it was just two. It was BuzzFeed. Oh, it was just two? Now that's okay. the keyboard thing. You know, let her eat. She can use a camera, but uh, there was a thing in there. I, I, I'm i surprised at things you can block. Like, she cannot send pictures, though. And she's 11. Like, I don't have to worry about, you know, that. But also, uh, first, first websites, you can actually go in and put websites. Because I know there's apps, too, but websites you want to block. Twitter.com. Smart. Facebook.com, Instagram.com, Snapchat.com, and YouTube.com. Yeah, but in there. they didn't have a, listen, some of the You're stuff. You're not letting her watch YouTube? Well, some of the stuff that these kids are watching on YouTube <laughs> these days, like I, if you want to watch kitty videos and stuff, I'm all for it. They're watching, you know, some gamer uh, on uh, the game, and he's like, F, F, D, F, F, this. Uh, no. It's not happening, Kyle. All right. But, by the way, uh, the predictions for the three games versus uh, L.A. Can I, Dave's got three Kings losses. That's correct. By an average margin of 38 points. Try 48 points, Kyle. Somebody, somebody asked me what I thought the Kings record would be after 50 games. 
I just had it all losses between now and then. And then they got mad at me. Like, oh, it's time to stop being negative. For Eunice, for Kyle, I'm Carmichael Dave. We apologize, and we will uh, try again tomorrow. Special apology to the guy from the 5 3 says, awesome sports talk. Yeah, yeah, deal with it, pal. We'll see you tomorrow at 6 a.m. for no sports talk. Bye-bye now. Go Kings, go Kings, go Kings. Bye-bye now. Oh.